Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. Maliki Young Park doubting inside my chest, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Uh, so I have the round three, game three, between Ramesh Babu Pragnananda and Michael Krasenkow. Um, so f as always, for all my people in the Philippines, I will say Mabu hi to you. Kumusta na, masaya kong makiri kang muli. Meraming salamat king makaibigan. Appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Uh, and if I have anybody coming from India, I will say Vana come to you and Nandri. Appreciate you guys very much uh, for stopping by and taking a look at my stuff. Uh, and uh, unless I'm, uh, as long as I'm not mistaken, that is where Prague is from. One second, let me check. Yes, he is from Chennai. <laughs> okay, yes, I had to make sure I got that right. Uh, yes, okay, cool. So uh, now Michael uh, Mikhail Krasenkow um, is actually originally uh, born in Moscow. Um, so he, he is like Russian and, you know, USSR-ish, and uh, he immigrated to Poland later. So for anybody who is watching the video who is coming from Russia, uh, I will say privyet to you, kakdela, uh, spasibo for coming by and taking a look at my stuff. Anybody who is coming from Poland, I will say shest and jen koyeci. Appreciate you guys very much. Uh, so I think I covered everything. If you guys are ready to go, this is a crazy, exciting game. Uh, this is um, one of the, I think, one of the craziest games I've shown on my channel. Uh, and uh, you guys, anybody that watches this video, uh, they are really going to appreciate and enjoy this game, definitely. So if you guys are ready to go, let's take a look and see what we have for this game. So we have B3. So we start off with the Nimza, Nimzovich uh, Larson attack. Uh, so, you know, it's just kind of like the little Fee and Keto. Um, you know, there's a lot of Fee and Kettles in positions and stuff that, that we have. So, uh, you know, this is not anything out of the ordinary. Uh, we see uh, E5. A bishop comes to B2. Uh, we got D6. Uh, and this... This is definitely like a good way to, uh, cause you know you have the the situation where this pawn is being attacked like like pretty directly, pretty quickly. So you do have to, you know, you you do have to defend it. Uh, normally, what you actually see the the top move and the strongest move by far is actually going to be knight to c6, uh, and then usually you're going to see white go e3. You know, their intention is to try to play bishop to b5. Uh, and, uh, you know, remove the defender of this bishop. So, you know, it's a hyper-modern type of attack, you know, pretty typical stuff. So, uh, but like I said, we do see D6, but we see C4 by Prague. Uh, we got G6, D4, Knight to D7, Pawn takes E5, Pawn takes E5, Knight comes to F3. We see Bishop to G7, E3, you know, uh, White is, uh, you know, getting uh, white is just slightly ahead, uh, but you know they're just kind of creating room uh, for their pieces to come out. You know, the knight's going to be probably coming here. The bishop's going to be coming to one of these two squares. We're going to see some castling, and then the queen developing, uh, and then we're all good to go. Uh, we have knight uh, to e7, bishop comes to e2, uh, and so after castles by black, uh, this is actually the novelty of the game. Uh, it's really interesting to see castles as the novelty, as I always say, but that uh, is the novelty of the game. So queen comes to d2. Uh, we got c6. Knight comes to c3. Knight to c5 by black. Rook comes over to d1. And as you guys can see, this position looks really, really, really nice for white. Uh, you know, they are basically just one move away from castling. Uh, they have this rook over here on this open file. Uh, so they are like completely pretty much good to go. Black isn't in like a bad position, but this knight is kind of weird. This bishop hasn't moved. This rook hasn't moved. This rook hasn't like kind of like, you know, gotten into like a more, a more active square than the initial, you know, castling square. So, you know, white is definitely much farther ahead uh, than black is. Uh, queen comes to b6. We have uh, bishop to a3. Rook comes over to e8. B4, so now you see white is starting to kind of push black around just a little bit. Uh, and as you can see, uh, you know, there isn't really a lot of good squares for this knight to go to. You know, there really isn't anything in white's side of the board it can go to. Uh, so we see knight coming back to e6. Castles by white, rook to d7. And this is a legitimate attack. I mean, you're not all the way pretty much ready to go as black, but... You know, it's always beneficial whether it's directly or indirectly putting the rook across from a queen uh, because then the queen is going to be forced to move. So the queen goes to c2. 
Bishop comes to d7, got queen to b3, knight comes to f5, and it does start to get better here for Prague. Knight comes to e4, uh, and you know, you are threatening all kinds of things as white. You know, you have c5 possibly coming. Uh, knocking this queen away you have this pawn actually in the perfect spot uh, because after you do push c5 uh, there aren't any knights penetrating into d4 um, so the position is just really really solid and really really nice for pride h5 comes bishop back down to uh, b2 and so you know we're placing a legitimate attack on this pawn because you know why not let's go ahead and just uh, start attacking stuff queen goes to c7 and then now c5 comes and as you can see black is really really cramped in this position you know their their knights aren't on the best squares the bishop only really was able to come to d7 uh and so you know the space advantage for white is very very apparent in this position uh we have b6 trying to free up black's position just a little bit uh, but we do see bishop to c3 after pawn takes uh c5 uh we see pawn taking c5 uh, rook uh, d to b8 so i mean another another tempo you know another tempo attack on the queen which is always nice you know no matter like i said what position you're in uh as long as you're not getting mated and you're attacking somebody's queen it's usually beneficial for you to attack the queen uh queen goes over to a3 side steps that uh, we have a5 bishop comes to c4 and something i want you guys to notice that is very very relevant in the position uh like look at these bishops dude this bishop is like slicing through to the king this bishop is slicing through over here you know you have like these knights that are pretty nicely placed you got the rook on the open file you know you have definitely a nice looking outpost square on d6 the queen is a little bit weird at the moment but this position is just completely all whites um this is just like you know <laughs> it, it it gets better after this um so we see f6 uh trying to trying to defend the uh the pawn that we have in the center of the board uh, you have h3 making sure you have some loot for your king because you know you don't you don't want to go on this crazy attack and you know and, and drop any type of like back rank issues uh, so we see king over to h8 g4 pawn takes g4 pawn takes g4 knight back to h6 and like you're honestly not even worried about this pawn <laughs> you're like you know whatever take it dude i don't even care so we actually see rook to d6 and this is like not normally what you would no like see in an outpost but this rook is like monstrous on this square uh and this is a very nice move knight takes on g4 but like i said we weren't caring about that king comes to g2 knight back to f8 we see rook to h1 with check knight comes to h7 and what i want you guys to go ahead and do in this position is actually stop the video if you want to and and guess and see what uh Pragnananda plays in this position. Go ahead and do so. Okay, cool. So this is actually like like one of those positions where it's like it really doesn't matter what you do. Like there are like 15 like possible possible you know moves for white. I mean you can literally take a rook takes here you can take a rook takes here. I mean you can just move the king up like the I mean it just <laughs> it's one of those positions where it's like I mean you have to be really really magical to find like the wrong move in this position but the move that Prague played uh which was it's a really nice idea and it really just literally starts an avalanche of like threats and attacks by white it's actually knight takes f6 and it kind of seems like it just throws the piece away <laughs> but you're getting it back so we see bishop takes f6 rook takes f6 knight takes f6 bishop takes e5 and you guys can see that you gave up the exchange but it literally doesn't even matter because not only are you you're pinning the knight here you're pinning this knight here you're also threatening the queen and you're going through the queen and threatening the rook to, so you basically you're threatening to get your exchange back this bishop is cutting off the king from moving over this queen now has space to move it's it's stupid <laughs> it's really stupid so we actually see queen to d8 and this is kind of like the only move that you can make in the position uh because you were just looking at getting mated after bishop takes f6 knight comes to g5 and like i said i mean it's it, it looked bad a minute ago but it looks even worse now because this rook is attacking this knight this knight is now adding extra pressure onto that 
Uh, you can't move the queen here because you're going to be looking at bishop takes f6. And, <laughs> I mean, the queen can move down and you're still going to deliver checkmate here. This is just like, th this is just really, I mean, it, it makes me feel bad <laughs> looking at this. Uh, so what we actually have in the position now is uh, the point where... Um, you remember when I tell you guys like, all the time, like, you know, when you get to the point where the computer starts telling you to throw pieces away, that's how you know it's bad. Well, we see Bishop to H3 in this position. And this is actually the very, very top computer move. Uh, so the, the, the computer is like, hey, man, you have to you have to go Bishop to H3. Uh, and so that literally doesn't phase white at all because we just see Rook takes H3. Uh, and it doesn't change anything whatsoever. You just literally gave the piece away for nothing. Uh, and now we and now we have a Rook to B7. And... Queen comes to c3, uh, and it is actually in this position uh, that Crescent Cow does resign the game. And I think you can see why. <laughs> I mean, like I said, this rook is pinning this knight. This knight is double attacked. Uh, this queen is over here, and this bishop is coming through. This bishop is coming through. So the game is like perfectly what you want when you have bishops. Uh, you guys saw that earlier. And you know the crazy thing about it? Uh, in this actual position, so like if we play further than this, the computer actually says that you have to play queen to d5. Because this is a maiden seven, but it's saying that if you don't play queen to d5, and if you play like the second or third top move, you're going to get mated faster. So, <laughs> I mean, like look at the queen. Like the queen is just like, man, it's crazy. But if we actually back up real quick, once rook to b7 was played, the computer, like being very sadistic, really actually wanted queen to b2. And this is actually a mate. Uh, I think I said it was a mate in five. So the one that Prague played was a mate in eight. And this actually says there's a mate in five available. So it's just like, <laughs> this is nasty, man. Like, come on. Because like you're you're dropping the queen, but it's like you're, you're actually threatening to take the rook right here. If the, if the queen, you know, if, if you don't take the queen here. <laughs> this is, man. <laughs> Uh, but you do have mate set up here. So, I mean, you can't really move off of this rank uh, because mate is going to be coming immediately uh, if you do. So, uh, this, uh, like I said, this is like one of the craziest games I've, I've shown on my channel. Uh, this was just like, I mean, I don't want to really call it an immortal game, but it definitely was a brilliancy. Um, this was a really, really nicely played game by Prague. I like to think that I played a game similar to this in my time. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think I played some okay games, but this is this is just mastery right here. So I'm definitely gonna come up with a really good title for this game. Uh, I have to do it justice, man. But I appreciate you guys very much. Um, I will say, uh, Spasibo. Uh, I think it's uh, Jen Kuyechi, uh, Nandri, uh, and Meruming Salamat, a King Makai Bigan, uh, Pa Alam, uh, and Mabuting Pagbadi. And I will see you guys next time.